court says cops can't look at your phone. Welcome back to Good News Next Week, everybody. I'm James Evan Pilato for MediaMonarchy.com. We've got that story plus the best possible use of a football field. But first, a story submitted to us by our buddy Morgan Lesko at Wiki World Order, and we'll take it just straight from the Los Angeles Times. As the United Nations General Assembly special session opened last Tuesday. The United Nations Office on Drugs and Crime announced new international recommendations including the decriminalization of marijuana, universal access to controlled medicines, criminal justice system reforms including elimination of mandatory minimum jail sentences and the abolition of the death penalty and acknowledging marijuana's medical use. The science increasingly supports decriminalization and harm reduction over prescriptive fear-based approaches, UNODC Director Yuri Fedotov said in a statement. It's time to reverse the cycles of violence that occur wherever drug wars are undertaken and to abandon policies that exacerbate suffering. The UNODC also said it would reform its decision-making process to include a more diverse range of voices. We can't begin to dismantle just-say-no policies that result in millions needlessly killed and incarcerated, and that defy logic and science, and instead bring to the forefront humane solutions that are known to work, said Kevin Campo, a spokesman for the drug agency. This is fantastic news. Unfortunately, it is fake. Los Angeles Times get fooled by fake drug war press release as they rush to judgment. We do have the article now from the Los Angeles Times as they followed up with the update that they had been had. The extra part about this story as well is Marijuana.com reports the update that it was indeed pulled off by the Yes Men. So more fantastic work from the Yes Men doing what Jello Biafra used to call monkey-wrenching the New World Order, and that's pranks and just generally messing with the system as they're not equipped to basically deal with what we can give them. Our second story on this episode of Good News Next Week, it's our 16th episode, I believe, and we're doing this April 25th, 2016. Cops need a warrant to open your phone, even to just look at the screen. This submitted by our buddy Mike and Philly at AFIXJS as Motherboard reports with a little bit of background. In a major decision back in 2014, the Supreme Court finally ruled that police need warrants to search someone's cell phone while making an arrest. That case, Riley v. California, was a major privacy victory. Now it's being interpreted by a federal court in Illinois to mean that even opening a phone to look at the screen qualifies as a search and requires a warrant. The Illinois case involves a sting operation that ensnared DeMonte Bell, an alleged drug dealer accused of illegal possession of an AK-47 assault rifle. An officer testified that while interrogating Bell, he pulled out a confiscated flip phone and opened it, revealing a picture of the file which Bell had set as his home screen's wallpaper. That was then used as grounds for a warrant to search Bell's phone for metadata about when and where the photo was taken. The officer claimed he opened the phone just to turn it off. But on Wednesday, a judge ruled police have no right to open a suspect's phone and look at the screen without first getting a warrant, even if it's just to turn it off, since the Riley case clearly established doing so is a search under the Fourth Amendment. Officer Sink's opening of Bell's cell phone exceeded a cursory inspection because he exposed to view concealed portions of the object, i.e. the screen, wrote Judge James E. Shahid. Because Officer Sinks had to manipulate the phone to view the picture on the screen, that picture was by definition not in plain view. That suggests that even if your device isn't locked with a passcode, a cop wouldn't be allowed to turn on the screen and look for incriminating notifications or messages without a search warrant. So this is another thing to remember while you're out there and having to deal with unlawful searches on your person as a sovereign human being. So in another great way, just say no. Our third and final story on this good news next week has the best possible use of a football field. We grab this from Dallas News, who basically note that Paul Quinn College, they had an old football field, they turned it into an organic garden, and it's helping the students, it's helping the community, it's helping pretty much everything. So you even have people in this article who I think you know, play sports for the college, who actually love to go work on the farm. And I know I've told you time and time again, when we were doing the goat share a couple of years ago, that once a week 
was my favorite time of the week because it got you outside. It literally got your hands dirty as we need to put our hands in the dirt. We need those minerals. We need that in our bodies. This is a fantastic way and a far better use of a big wasted plot of land. Now, I would only push this further and say if we could continue this great work on maybe our nation's golf courses. We can turn them into organic farms and we would, again, eliminate the manufactured problem of homelessness and our veterans and all of that in one pretty much fell swoop and you could just grow more hemp. Some of the other stories we're watching using hashtag good news next week right here in Portland. A startup has mapped the cannabis genome to protect weed from Monsanto patenting, even though they say, oh, we never will get into doing any of that. The really interesting story from the Willamette Week weekly newspaper here in Portland. Our buddy Brock West noted that Ortho is going to drop neonicotinoids from some of its work. Work? Uh, from some of their disgusting insecticides <laughs> they're just going to be slightly less disgusting garden care giant to drop chemicals linked to b declines meanwhile costco is financing organic farmers to meet with high consumer demand i grabbed this from activist post and it originally comes from natural blaze but basically costco the huge massive store is now selling even more organic then Whole Foods, and they can't keep enough of it in stock, so they're now paying farmers to be able to up the amount of organics. Again, this seems to be the one main way that we've actually pushed back against the powers that shouldn't be, and all the big, disgusting food poison companies are all backing up and changing their ingredients and saying, oh gosh, okay, we'll, we'll, we'll change our stuff, just please keep buying our garbage, except we're not going to. And we stopped a long, long time ago. And again, that's all about making your food as your medicine and making the revolution start in your fridge and in your medicine cabinet, basically making your refrigerator your medicine cabinet. Our last good news next week note comes from our buddy James Corbett, who noted that Donald Rumsfeld got destroyed on Twitter for being a war criminal. He had tweeted at 83, I am close to losing hope that I will live to see a flat tax. And people basically responded to say, ah, I'm 18 and I lose hope I won't see your ass prosecuted for war crimes. So again, another way, whether it's phony press releases tricking the United Nations or calling out murderers on their little social media platforms, these are the ways that we can push back against and basically say we're not going to have anything to do with your garbage anymore. And again, remove your consent. We love and need your Good News Next Week story ideas using hashtag Good News Next Week, or you can always drop me a line, james at mediamonarchy.com, and I can continue to put out non-commercial alternative media. We've been listener-supported, and we have been Media Monarchy since 2005, and would love your support at mediamonarchy.com slash support. This has been Good News Next Week for April 25th, 2016. I'm James Evan Pilato for mediamonarchy.com, reminding you, as always, my friends, don't hate the media. Become the media. Take care. <laughs>